y'all, it's Kay. Today I thought we would start with a little haul before I get into the next page in our mini album. We're also going to be working on this pocket on this inside front cover. Let me move this aside and show you what I found. to show you is this lace trim that has these little daisies with the embroidered yellow centers there. I got it at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off, which is every other week. Regular $5.99. It's 7 8 inch wide by two yards, and so it cost me around $3. I am excited to add this to our album. This is going to be one of the trims I'm going to use. As I find things that are looking good and I think I'm going to use for the album, I will show you ahead of time if I can so that you can go look for some. The next thing I wanted to show you is that my score tape came in. I got the bundle this time. So I have lots of sizes from this little tiny 1 8 inch all the way up to 1 inch. So I have 1 8, 1 4, 3 8, which is my favorite the half inch, and this one is five-eighths of an inch. Actually, that one's five-eighths of an inch, and this one is an inch. So I have all of these sizes. So that gives me a nice variety when I'm doing a book or if I'm doing memorabilia in the book or if I'm doing some cut-aparts. I have different size tape to use, and that's a lot more convenient than piecing together a bunch of small pieces. This retails on Amazon for $42.96, and I know that sounds like a lot, and it was for me too, which is why I waited so long to get my score tape. I should have showed you the front because they're all labeled, but $42.96 for six rolls, and normally it's about $8 a roll, so that would be $48. So you save about $5 if you buy the big bundle package, and as a bonus, they give you a little utility knife, a little box cutter if you want to call it. You know, it probably didn't cost them a quarter for that, but they come in handy for some crafting that we do, and I guess some people actually cut their score tape with it. But I wanted to show you that I got in my bundle, y'all, a score tape, and this will last me quite a while since I have so many different sizes. So I'm excited that I won't have to use the wrong size now. All the time I have a variety to choose from. So I got those, and again, they were $42.96 from Amazon. The last thing I got that I want to show you today is my new glue that I got. Again, Art Glitter Glue. This one is the four ounce size. I have been using the eight ounce size, but I needed a new tip and so forth. So I got the bundle package. So you get the four ounce Art Glitter Glue. You get the little small bottle, which I will be filling this up and using this. And then that goes on like so. And that way you don't get the glue down in the tip and get that stopped up. And then it also comes with the little metal tip, which is almost like a straight pin and then little fine tip. And that glue goes on the big bottle when you want to use it that way. And you don't put the top back on it. You put the little pin down in there, which you may have seen me use in the big one that I have. But after so long of having it, I actually got it clogged up and I had to clean it out with some acetone. So it was time to get some new glue. This glue lasts you about a year before it starts getting hard in the bottle. It is great glue because it dries really fast. It's permanent, it's acid free, it's great for even pictures. Love Art Glitter Glue. And I like having all my little kits. It even comes with a little funnel to put down in the bottle and fill that up. But it's good to have these little bottles so you don't get your tip all stopped up in here. So let me move this aside and we'll start on today's video, continuing on our mini album. So here's the front cover again of our album. If you've been following along, you've seen it several times now. I'm going to, first of all, today put in a pocket for this front 
inside cover. That way we can slide all kinds of things in there, memorabilia, maybe just pictures and items while we're working on the rest of the album, and then we come back and place it where we want it to go. So a pocket is always nice. You could put tickets in there from different events, whatever you did. Maybe this is a spring album and you're just going to log your year, but any memorabilia or any brochures, maps, whatever you could put in this front pocket. So many things you could come up with. So first thing I'm going to do is grab some 110 cardstock back in the white again, and we're going to cut the piece for the inside front cover. This is my 110 pound cardstock again in the white. I'm going to turn it on the side, the long side, and cut it first at nine inches. So that's our first cut, nine inches. Then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to cut it at four and three quarters. So you want to line it up and cut it at four and three quarters. And we'll just save those. We're going to use them in another place. And this is the beginning of our inside pocket. Now we need to get out our scoring board. Now we have it in our scoring board on the nine inch side. And I'm going to make two score lines on this side, across from it on that side, and at the bottom here to make our pocket. The first line I'm going to score at is at half an inch. Half an inch, again at three quarters of an inch. And don't go too deep because this is really thick paper, but still it could tear if you go at it too thick. I think I'll change the ends of the model there. Okay, and now we'll turn it around, just flip it like so, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to score it at half an inch. And three quarters of an inch. And then I want to score it down this long side. So I'm going to put it in here on that four and three quarters inch side and do the same thing. Score it at half an inch and three quarters of an inch. And now we fold it. So I'm going to turn it over like so. Fold that up. And then I'll fold this side. We're going to fold again on the second line. So what you've done is create a gusset. And that's going to give us room to slide everything in. So let's get everything folded. And we also need to burnish them down. So I'm going to burnish this first one. And this one. Turn it over here on this side and fold inward again. And on the thinner line too, folding in. And you can see that's starting to form the sides of our pocket with a little gusset. Now let's do the bottom. We've got that one folded up and burnish it. Now let's fold the narrow one, the half inch one, and burnish. The next thing we're going to do is go in and take out this square at the bottom on both sides. You want to go all the way to the second fold and across. So I'm going to cut a little over the line probably to get myself some room and then to the second line on this side. And you can see I took out that square. Let me go on this side and cut just a little beyond the fold so it folds comfortably. And again, to the second line, just a little above it. And we took out that notch. Now that we have it notched, you can probably see that everything folds up like so and it makes a little pocket. Of course, we need to cover it and we need to make it pretty, but the first thing I'm going to do is put some score tape on these edges, and because it's half an inch here, I'm going to again use my most popular size that I love, the 3 8 inch score tape. 
So we're just going to apply it here at the bottom, kind of close to the edge, without going over as close as we can get it. And if you remember for the score tape, you're supposed to be able to use some kind of straight edge. You can use one of those acrylic blocks that you use for stamps. You can use your scoring tool like I just did. Or you can take the time and cut it with scissors. I try to remember not to cut it with the scissors, even though that just seems like the easiest way to do it. But it gums up my scissors because this is such good tape. Then I have to go in with a little goo gone and clean it up. So let me put this one on. Okay. And we want to burnish that down. And that's the beginnings of our pocket. Now we need to cut a piece of paper that's pretty to go on the front of our pocket. This is one of our scraps that we used earlier in the book. I'm going to use it to cover my pocket. So we're going to use most all of our scraps as we go along. This one I'm going to cut first of all at seven and three quarters. So I'm going to line it up here in my paper trimmer and we're cutting that at seven and three quarters. Then we're going to turn it on this side and we're going to cut it at three and three quarters. So three and three quarters. I think since I have this five eighths inch score tape, I'm going to use it around the edges here of the back of my scrapbook paper. Let me get that on, I'll just speed this part up. The next thing we want to do is burnish this tape down. Give it a good pressing. We want to make sure it's on there really well. And then we're going to take off the backing from our tape. I'm using my Cricut pokey tool that you use for weeding in Cricut. And I did see where the Dollar Tree is selling one that looks almost exactly like this, y'all. And I would buy one just because I lose these so often. But my store doesn't have them in yet. Let me know if you have seen them at your store. This is an invaluable tool. It is used for a lot of things. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is come in with our art glitter glue and put some in between the areas where there isn't any tape. Now we're going to put it down onto our uh, pocket. I told you wrong earlier. I told you that I cut it at seven and three quarters inch wide. It is seven and one quarter inch wide. So this measurement is seven and one quarter inches and this measurement is three and three quarters inches because we want it to come in about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around on our pocket here. And you want to line it up as carefully as you can because once it's down, well, it is down, <laughs> and that's all there is to it. So this will be our pocket. I'm going to bring back over the cover, and we'll put that on. So let's open up the front cover of our book, and we're going to place our pocket, just kind of centering it a little from the bottom and from side to side. It will come in less than what this background paper is. That's why it's important to put this background paper on first. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove our tape. And I am sorry that I told you the wrong measurement for the width of this paper when I was doing it. So I want to remind you again, I got a little ahead of myself. And if you notice, you can go ahead and fold up this bottom and line up the corners. That works really well because that's some sticky, sticky tape. Now let's put this inside the book, kind of just a tiny bit from the edge all the way around. Once I get it where I want it. The next thing you want to do is come in and make sure these sides are smoothed down and that our pocket is nice and stuck. Let me bring back over page one. So this will be the first page we will see in our book. See how that's coordinated and it's so cute. This was the scrap from this piece. 
and this will fold over like so. And I have page two and page three that we're going to work on next. And this, of course, is signature one, signature two, but page two, page three. So what I have decided for page two and three, I'm going to have some flaps coming down from the top and over this way, and maybe we'll have some side flaps too. But let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is take out some 65 pound white cardstock to make our flaps. The first thing I'm going to do is put my page in here on the 11 inch side, and I'm going to cut it exactly in a half, which would be five and a half inches. So let's line it up at five and a half, just like that. And we want to do that one more time. Now for the second sheet, cutting it at five and a half inches on the 11 inch side. So now we have four. Now I'm going to bring over my scoring board. Now I have it in my scoring board on the eight and a half inch side and I'm going to score it at half an inch on one end. And then we'll fold that down and burnish it. Now let's do the second one on the eight and a half inch side, score it at half an inch and fold it under and burnish it. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other two sheets and I'll speed that up. And that gives us four flaps. The next thing we want to do is come in and put on some 3 8 inch score tape on all of the edges. Now I'm going to put 3 8 inch score tape on all of my edges of my four flaps. and we'll put it as close to the edge as possible without going over. So now let's look at page two. I'm going to put my flap down. I'm going to put it a tiny bit from the top and I'm going to center it from side to side this way. And then I will come in with the second one and we'll center it in the middle as well. We could use magnets on this, but I usually don't use magnets when it's this big because between the weight of the scrapbook paper and the pictures, it will stay closed. So let's go ahead and put this one on and then we have to be careful with the second one to make sure it lines up with what we did at the top. So I'm going to turn this around and get out my pokey tool and remove this tape. I just want it near me so I can make sure I centered as best as possible. And it comes in about an inch on both sides. And so that's our first one for page two. And I'm gonna turn it around and I'm going to put the bottom one on. Same thing, just remove my tape. The backing for my tape, actually. And this one's trickier because we want it to Match that one as perfectly as possible. I suppose you could measure with a ruler each time and get even closer to perfect. But I usually don't. I usually just eyeball it and it kind of comes together. There we go. So they will open like so. And let's go ahead and put them on page three the same way. I'm going to speed it up, of course, but I'm going to put one at the top and one at the bottom. Then I'm going to come in and put some side flaps as well. Let me put these two on and then I'll show you what I mean. So the next thing we need to do is cut our side flaps. And what we're going to do is keep this eight and a half inch side. We're going to turn it on the 11 inch side and cut it at seven inches. So cut it at seven. Let's do that again. Put it on the 11 inch side and cut it at seven. This is going to give us two flaps. Now we want to put it in our scoring board on our seven inch side and we're going to score it at half an inch. Remember, not too deep. 
scored at half an inch. We'll fold that over and burnish it down. That gives us one side pocket. Then let's take this sheet again and put it on the seven inch side and we're going to score it at half an inch. I think I have some glitter down in the grooves of my scoring board and that's why I have a little bit of difficulty. So it's got to have a good cleaning this weekend. And let's fold that over. When I'm using glitter on a project, it gets everywhere. Do you have that problem? My son calls it ground up evil. I like glitter, but my boys don't like the glitter. So this is going to be our two side pockets. They will be attached like so to the side. Next thing I want to do is put on our 3 8 inch scoring tape. So we'll just put this as close to the edge as we can and get it lined up. Put it on our paper here. We'll get that with our tool to cut it off. All right, that's one. Let's do the second one. Same thing, using my 3 8 inch score tape. And there are other tapes on the market. I'm not saying you have to use score tape. It is just my preferred tape. And there are cheaper tapes, there really are. But if this is going to be something you keep for a lifetime or you're making for a gift or you're selling at a craft show, you want it to be a really good product. And this stuff stays together. Do you remember how I said I keep the little sticky notes on there for just about the whole entire project till I get it together? Um, it's always a good thing because I'm always verifying to make sure because I don't want my pockets on the wrong side, right? I want it to be on this edge coming out and I want this one to be on this edge coming out. So let's get those attached. I'll move this one aside for now and it goes on this side. So again, I've already burnished down my tape. Let's remove this backing, just like so. And then we're going to line it up kind of centered from top to bottom and tiny bit from the edge, not a lot. And we'll smooth that down. And we could have it fold out like so and then this one come up and that one come down. So you have a choice, you can do it that way. Or you could have this one go inside and these come down. The flaps are really important because remember this is an interactive mini album, excuse me, interactive mini album, which means you've got pages moving, things that move around and give you more depth and dimension. And we can put pictures here, 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 and here, and here also. We have lots of room for our pictures and our memories. So let me get the next page on. So we'll just burnish this down. I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to open this up. This is the side I want it on. I'm going to move it towards me so I can center it and get it smoothed down. And then there is page three. And we've got all of those sheets moving around. And if you recall, I told you that inside we'll have inserts here too. And we haven't even begun page four. It will be something totally different. So this is what we're looking at right now. All of these flaps. Now I want to go in and put our background paper here and here. Let me pick a pattern and we'll get cutting. So if you recall, this is the paper I'm using. It's called Meant to Be. Craft Smart got it at Michael's. It was hot buy. I bought it when it was buy one, get two free. Now they do it a little differently, but they still, uh, about once a month, give you a really good price on these paper pads. This is the color I have chosen for the background on page two and page three. I like my pages to complement each other as they open up, and it makes for less decisions you have to make, right? So if you have the pages looking very similar on the right and the left, you don't have to worry about all your colors not meshing, right? So I'm going to use this. This page is largely not seen, so my little rule of thumb is I pick a cute page and a coordinating page, but I don't pick my prettiest page to go on the back of page two and page three, not on the background. Because again, so much is going to cover it up. We're gonna have pictures on here. 
maybe some wording and maybe some journaling. A lot of different things we can do. Some stickers, some cut aparts. Maybe we have some um, stamping going on. A lot of things you can do. So I picked my least favorite, but I still like it. That's important to me to be the background of page two and page three. We're going to cut these at seven and a quarter by nine and a half. Let me get my cutter. First cut I'm going to make is seven and a quarter inches. All right, seven and a quarter. And I'm going to do that to both. Seven and a quarter. That gives us our width. And then for our height on our book, we're going to cut this at nine and a half. Lining that up carefully. Nine and a half. And again, nine and a half. And this is going to be our background paper. I'm going to use my 5 8 inch score tape and I'm going to put it all around the sides, some down the middle, and of course then we'll use some glue once we take the bagging off. But I'm going to speed up this process. I'm going to put it as close to the edge as I can and I'm going to burnish it down with my scraping tool. And then I'm also going to use this to help me tear the tape. So I'm going to speed up this process a little bit. Now we're going to put on some more glitter glue on these spaces in between. Now to remind you, that's page one, flipping it over, flipping out all of our flaps. And for page two, I'm going to move our sticker aside for just a moment. And I'm going to carefully place it here on my backing. This is not directional, so it doesn't matter what's the, which one's the top, which one's the bottom. You want to move it in about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then we'll just press that down. And that's our background paper. That's page two. And of course, later we're going to add paper here and here and here. There is a lot you can do. Today, I am going to add the front part of both of my flaps. Let me put the back on page three, and then we'll move on, and I'll show you what I've chosen for the cover here. So this is the paper I have chosen for the front of the flaps that you'll see when you open page two and page three. The first measurement I'm going to cut is at eight and a quarter inches wide. So it's non-directional. We don't have to worry. So we're going to cut it at eight and a quarter first, and I'm going to do that on both of them. Eight and a quarter. There's our strip, okay? Once we get this measurement, we're going to turn it on its side and we're going to cut it at six and a quarter. So six and a quarter inches, just like that. We'll save that. We could use that on a different flap. And again, cut this one at six and a quarter inches. So these two pages are six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Now let me get some glue on the back of these. I'm going to use my score tape. I'll go ahead and use the five eighths inch again and get that on there. And then we'll put some glue and put it in our book. And I'm going to put it on my flap here, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Let's 
smooth that down. And later on, we'll come back and add paper here and here and here and on the back sides as well. Today, I'm going to stop with just the front, but I am going to do page three as well so you can see how it looks coming together. So with this, I think we're going to close out today's session working on our interactive 8x10 mini album. But I wanted to remind you, this is the cover. Here is the spine and the back. We constructed this from chipboard and paper. If you haven't seen those videos, we'll leave you a link below so you can go and watch them. Opening up our mini album, we've got our hinge here that all of our signatures will go on. We've got a, our pocket that we did today. Here is page one when we open it up. It's a gateway fold. It has a magnet in there and it goes like so. And then we'll move to page two and we have three flaps on these pages. So we have a lot of opportunity to put pictures. This is just the beginning. We still have pages four through eight plus the back cover, and we'll do something creative to that. We're not even finished with these pages because we have to embellish them further. But first of all, we have to get it started and get it to the point where we can put it in our album and do some things there. So I think we'll stop here today. I hope you will join me next time as we work on the rest of our pages and embellishing our album. Don't forget tomorrow is our scavenger hunt on our other channel called Crafting Cousins. And we will be giving away another Cricut Joy there. Seven other channels join us and you'll be going through and looking for the secret words in each video. You will email those. There will be lots of instructions in that video tomorrow. Also, we're going to have craft chat early tomorrow morning. So if you want to come, talk to Trish and I, give us some questions, some comments, um, whatever. Tune in in the morning. Um, we will ha be having craft chat and we're going to do it live. We don't always do craft chat live, but we will this Saturday. Thank you guys for joining me and I hope you have a great weekend. Bye y'all. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all!